beautiful Bogong in northern Victoria. With its delicate ecosystem and abundant natural wildlife, you wouldn't let a bulldozer loose within 10 miles of this unspoiled paradise. Yet a major construction company has already been here. And this is the result. Here at Bogong, McConnell Dowell has created a masterpiece of modern creative engineering and forward thinking by harnessing the power of Mother Nature into a power station that produces 140 megawatts of power for the Greater Melbourne area. A power station that draws from the area's natural resources without exploiting the natural environment. In short, through careful, creatively driven solutions-based thinking, McDowell has produced world-class engineering excellence that is perfectly in harmony with nature. In the design of the Bogong power development, the fact that the uh, power station and uh, tunnel has meant that we do not have to construct a dam has been an important component. It is a, a fairly new initiative in relation to hydro construction and certainly was a key component of our ability to achieve environmental approvals to allow the project to proceed. The construction of the project involved both high degrees of difficulty and high risk activities. These included using high energy explosives, working in a pristine alpine environment, tunnelling in massive basalts up to 300 MPa in strength at 400 metres below the surface, excavating shafts up to 150 metres deep and building the massive power station adjacent to the pristine Pretty Valley Creek. Given the, uh, the nature of the construction activities, being that it consisted of a seven kilometre uh, hard rock tunnel and also major construction work of uh, a very large and substantial concrete structure, being the power station, it was important that we maintain the highest standard of uh, safety uh, in terms of procedures and policies, but also delivery on the ground. Construction risks had to be professionally and skillfully managed to ensure the successful delivery of the project. For example, the generating units needed a significant amount of time to complete, yet the power station structure had to be completed before these works could begin. Consequently, McDowell created key initiatives in order to provide early power generation. These included optimising the size and layout of the power station, the station was raised, rotated and simplified with the removal of the bypass valve and pipework, realigning key interfaces and performing hydraulic studies that enabled the power station tail race to be shortened, almost eliminating any effect on Lake Guy, and by conducting value engineering exercises to provide optimum whole-of-life costs to the project by analysis of the steel liner and waterway hydraulics. McDowell also created key construction initiatives. By developing an accelerated civil program, construction time of the power station structure was reduced from 16 months to 12. Relocating the existing flood protection bank created extra construction and storage areas on site. Constructing a major retaining wall at the entrance to the power station gave early access to the loading bay area. This provided early clean conditions for turbine installation. And redesigning the turbine level walls allowed alignment procedures to be undertaken early. Because of scaling back of the original project during the 1950s, the dam and power station were never built. This meant that the tailrace flow from the Mackay Creek power station discharged straight into the East Kiwa, degrading the aquatic ecology. Thanks to the new construction, this problem has been rectified. Tailrace waters from Mackay Creek power station now divert via an underground waterway to the power station and release right into Junction Dam. This improves the aquatic ecology 
and restores the Pretty Valley branch of East Kiwa River to its natural, unspoiled state. Of course, with a project of this scale and positioning, there were many other environmental challenges. Especially the vast amount of excavation and construction in the Alpine National Park and right next to pure mountain streams. Council certainly had initial concerns about a, a major project um, and construction site within a national park. However, McConnell Dow has worked with Council and the client to ensure that those concerns have been addressed um, and addressed particularly well. A waterway treatment plant was installed on site to treat all construction water before being discharged. And to prevent transporting sediment from construction vehicles, all roads and car parks McDowell created were sealed with bitumen. The ultimate performance of the power station was defined by the performance of the waterway. The contract criterion was to deliver 38 cumecs of water to the twin 140 megawatt turbines with a guaranteed pressure of 4.13 MPA. Maximum head loss was set at 18 metres over a static water system head of 426 metres. However, performance testing of the waterway yielded head loss of only 12 metres. This is a 33% improvement in waterway efficiency and translates to 2.3 megawatts of extra power development for the life of the project. The unusual nature of the project created a complex list of problems that required creative solutions. For example, there were minimal level areas available at the site to establish amenities, storage for large amounts of construction materials and the mobilisation and assembly of large tunnelling equipment. The tunnel boring machine alone was 140 metres long. This meant McDowell engineers had to invent creative ways to set up works to optimise the limited areas available. We sat down with McConnell Dow and we moved into a value engineering exercise. And at the most senior level, engineering and management, we engaged over a period of about four to five days and we sought about identifying areas where not only could we save money, but also how we may go about improving the final product. From my point of view, I think coming up with a successful solution to the excavation of the power station site was probably the challenge that we, uh, the biggest challenge we had and probably one that we dealt with, ended up dealing with extremely well. Um, it was successful, it was economic, and it was done in, in quick time as well. Thinking outside the square became essential to make the project succeed. For example, the shaft construction. By using raised boring techniques instead of blind sinking for shafts, McDowell created better waterway and station efficiency and provided a safer working environment. In the construction of the high-pressure tunnel plug, significantly improving the concrete mix helped pumping 800 metres into the tunnel and kept hydration and thermal effects to a minimum. For the steel lining of the HPHT, a specialised rail-borne pipe transporter was sourced from Europe and adapted to suit. This allowed the 3 metre diameter, 12 metre long 30T liner sections to be transported 700 metres underground with 300 millimetres of clearance on the sides and a remarkable positioning accuracy within plus or minus of just 15 millimetres. A project of this scale meant the involvement of several parties or with industrial working agreements with various unions. As the principal contractor, McDowell managed all site IR with no industrial dispute and no lost time. During the project, more than 300,000 tonnes of very hard granodiorite rock was removed. Federal and state funding was secured 
to help build an all-weather road across the Bogong High Plains. Without the use of the spoilage from the tunnel to reseal and, and develop the Bogong High Plains Road, uh, that redevelopment of the High Plains Road, the accessibility uh, that it has given to the High Plains may not have happened. The, the project's put a number of things back into the community. Um, one of them, I guess, is just uh, a belief that a small town can uh, be a part of a big project that we feel we felt involved. Around about 30 to 35 per cent of those employed on the project or providing services to the project were from the local area of northeastern Victoria and that also reinforced the commitment that we made from the outset that we would try and maximise the involvement of local people, employment and businesses. Due to our uh, inability to uh, do a lot of uh, exploratory uh, drilling and test bores uh, under or within the Alpine National Park, it meant that we had about five and a half kilometres of tunnel where we had absolutely uh, limited information. We certainly were able to draw on geotech information from the 1950s, but recent information, particularly along the tunnel alignment, was very limited. McConnell Dow and their design consultants were able to examine this information plus a lot of available uh, geotech information from the area and came up with a design of tunnel support, tunnel alignment that in hindsight after construction of the project was realised. The degree of accuracy that we found in the final ground conditions compared to that assessment pre-construction was remarkable. From our point of view, why the project proceeded so well and with so many, so few issues was the attitude that AGL took to it. There's no question that they are a commercially astute client and act accordingly, but they are completely committed to ensuring, their personnel were completely committed to ensuring that that project finished on time and was of good quality. And having a client like that is of so much benefit um, you just can't appreciate it. We'd love to do it again. This has been one of the most enjoyable projects the company's done for a long time. Just some of the construction challenges and the solutions created to solve them included in waterway efficiency and layout, steel liner design optimization, tail race alignment, and bifurcation and manifold design and construction. Through creative construction techniques, Bogon is now home to the power station that lives in perfect harmony with nature. Thanks to McConnell Dowell.